the Kansas City Star newspaper was founded in 1890 by William Nelson. It was geared toward families of the Midwest, serving an eight-state region. Well, from 1921 to 1961, the Kansas City Star published quilt patterns. Oh, they ran weekly through 1937. The farm wife carefully clipped and saved the patterns as they appeared and she often shared them with family and friends. Well, in those 33 years, 1,068 patterns were published. They depicted life and living in America. Oh, there were so many patterns, it's gonna be hard to choose just which one we're going to make today. The first pattern, called the Pine Tree, was published on September 22, 1928. Now the pattern included full-size templates, some suggestions for color selection, and a sketch of the finished block. However, no instructions to put it together were included. They felt patchwork was that easy. Well, the Kansas City Star didn't employ a quilt editor. The first two years of patterns were supplied by Ruby McKim. Now, she's credited with producing the most innovative patterns of all times. Now, this is a picture of her on her graduation. Oh, it was taken in 1910. Well, she was certainly my hero. Well, Ruby and her husband had established McKim Studios in Independence, Missouri. Well, her book, 101 Patchwork Patterns, is the first quilting book I ever bought, and it's still published today by Dover. Well, Ruby ran her patterns in other newspapers as well. Well, the second annual $275 quilt contest appeared in the Indian Indianapolis Star, December 4th, 1930. Well, the contestants were to make the 25 blocks from the newspaper, and then week 26, they were given the quilting pattern. Now, this is the contest block number five, the double T. Now, that's a quilt block related to the temperance readers. Well, the readers were faithful, and they did exactly what Ruby McKim suggested. Now, this is the 25 block quilt made apparently for the contest, and it's set on point with the quilting as she suggested. And oh, the quilting is just beautiful. Now, right here in the corner is that double T block we talked about in purples. Ooh, it's just a great quilt. Now, this is the second quilt made of the same 25 blocks, but this quilt maker did a straight set with lattice and cornerstones. It's bright, isn't it? Now the quilt maker even followed the suggested colors right here with the wild goose chase. The colors were suggested to be blue and white, and she did it perfect. Now the hickory leaf is in yellows and peaches. Once again, she followed the instructions. And then going on down, the rising sun in oranges and reds. Oh, perfect. And look at that one to the side, the rambling rose in pinks and greens. Well, the Kansas City Star published another pattern. Oh, this is just beautiful. In May, and the pattern was the Lone Star Quilt, or it was also called the Quilt for Texas. Look at that. Well, Ruby described it as one of the more ambitious projects in quilt making. She suggested the colors of red, orange, peach, yellow, lettuce green, and turquoise. Can you believe this? Now, the pattern is also identified as the Star of the East or Star of Bethlehem. And these colors have just remained as bright as can be through all the years. Now, following Ruby McKim as quilt pattern contributor was Evelyn Folan. Now, she was the illustrator for the next three years at the Kansas City Star. And you can see right here, her name appeared very boldly on 100 and 31 patterns. Now this is one of my favorites. This is Ararat, 
the elephant. Well, he was a slow old elephant that lived in the Swope Park Zoo in Kansas City. And Evelyn suggested the colors of purple and gold. Well, of course, before long, the people were referring to Ararat as the GOP elephant. And the ladies in Sedalia, Missouri, wanted a Democratic donkey for his running mate. So just six weeks later, look at this, Evelyn produced Gidap, a very democratic donkey. Oh, and it's just, this is just one block left. They did it in great patriotic colors of turkey red. It's wonderful. Well, by this time, the editors of the Kansas City Star realized that printing quilt patterns meant money to them in the way of increased reader circulation, and also they could sell additional patterns. Well, they hired Miss Edna Marie Dunn, who produced the column for the next 30 years. Now, Edna only signed four of her patterns, but today I want to show you how to make one of her patterns. The cypress pattern. Now the cypress vine is from the Morning Glory family with showy trumpet-shaped scarlet or white flowers with leaves. We're gonna make ours out of reproduction fabric in red, yellows, and greens. So let's go downstairs to the sewing machine. This quilt certainly does look like 1933. Boy, I think Miss Dunn would just love this quilt. Well, you can see right here the red trumpet flower, and then here's the center of the flower right here, and then it's surrounded by four green leaves, and then right here, oh, this must be the golden sun coming in. Now, the block itself is approximately nine inches square, and it's set together with two-inch lattice and a two-inch corner cornerstone and when you set it together with the lattice and the cornerstones then you create that secondary pattern then it looks really interesting now if you love scraps you're just gonna love this quilt oh the fresh blue and yellow of spring you have blue trumpet flowers and a flower garden right in the center and then instead of the yellow the green leaves You've got some yellow leaves that looks great. And again, it's set together with the lattice and cornerstones. Now, if you like the contemporary look, ooh, you will love this one. Purples, grays, and yellows. Now, there's actually a seashell in that print. Makes it very exciting, very modern looking. Now, the blocks are set right next to each other, so there is a, a different secondary pattern created than the one that you get whenever you put the lattice in between. Now we're going to work with a unique piece that's actually a triangle inside a square. Now this is what it looks like. This is that little red trumpet flower right here, the triangle right inside the square. And to get this piece, we're going to use two rulers, this one right here, a triangle ruler, and the piece that's going to go next to it will make actually a rectangle when you put two together. It'll go on this side, and then we'll flip, and we'll put it on the other side so we create that unique piece. Now they come from four inch strips. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my um, cutter and ruler combination. I have my red and my white all lined up. Oh, I've got that torn edge. Let me just get it right straight on the grid. And all I want to do is just first trim away that torn, bruised edge. <laughs> get rid of that. Now, go ahead and line up the four inch line. Oh, looks good. Pull this back down here, then just bear down hard and push away from you. Ooh, and we should have perfect four inch strips. I'm just gonna take this piece, set this aside for more trumpet flowers. But first, let's work with the red trumpet flower piece right here, and we'll just separate that out. We actually have to cut that separately. And just line it on your grid, and go ahead, take the triangle ruler, and Line it up, since this is a four inch strip, use the four inch line on the ruler. And I'm just gonna line up right across the bottom right here. And if you notice, right up on here, it doesn't have a crisp point on it. Well, that's what we wanna work with right now. So, once you have it lined up, both ends, hold that firm, cut up on the right side, and then turn around and go down the left side, pull that away. Now, this is what the piece looks like. 
rotate the ruler, and once again line up the four inch line straight on that strip and get the edge of the ruler right up against that cut edge. Ooh, let's get it perfect. Just bear down hard and cut away from you. So you just keep on going up and down the ruler, cutting as many trumpet flowers as you need. There's actually four in each block. One more, and that'll do us. Ooh, we've got three great ones. We'll just take this. Put this aside for later, and I'm just going to turn these over and stack them so that they're all right side up and ready for sewing. Now, we've got the triangle done. Let's go ahead and get the piece for the rectangle, actually for the side. Take the four inch strip, let me turn it over. Right here is that salvage edge right here. And the first thing that we need to do is just square off that salvage edge, get a straight edge ready to go. This piece, gone. Line up the edges. Now this one also has the four inch line right across the bottom. So line up the four inch line there, and then up at the top, ooh, it's got just a bit of a straight edge right here we need to line up. So let me just cut right up along there, and watch this, because this is critical. We have just a wee little piece we have to cut off right in the end. We're just gonna call that a crumb. So just cut off that crumb, and that's what your piece looks like right in the end. And once you've got that cut, just like the triangle ruler, go ahead and turn it upside down, rotate the edge, line up the four inch line along here, line up the edge of the ruler on the previous cut edge. Let me hold that straight. Cut that along there and get that crumb right off of there. Well, we'll just go ahead and work with these two pieces and see if we can just sew this together. It's a quarter inch seam allowance, 15 stitches to the inch, and you want to just go ahead and take and stack your trumpet like this and then take the pieces here. We're going to put a triangle on the right and then flip this right side up so that it's on the left, and just stack them up. Always stack them right sides up, right and left. Okay, let's just work with one stack on the right right now, and I'm gonna pull everything else away so you can see it. Take this triangle on the right and flip it right sides together, and now you have some perfect points to line up. That crumb helps you out right here. You can see there's the crumb right there. What I'm gonna do is take that crumb and line it up with the straight edge on the triangle, and you've got just a bit of a tip hanging out right on the bottom. That's a good match point. Straight edge, straight edge there, and then up on the top edge, You've got that squared off top on the triangle, and it's just gonna line up with that quarter inch seam as you go right down along there. This is going to be good. All right, let me see. I've got my um, quarter inch foot on my machine. It's all ready to go. Just hold those threads. Boy, we don't want this eating the triangle right now. And your, tr your stiletto is really helpful for guiding that through as you go along, and I can see you've got just that perfect line up right there. Hold it straight through, clear to the end. Then take a second one, flip it right sides together. Actually, you wanna go ahead and assembly line sew at least all four for one block. Line that up there. Just shoot that right through there. Keep it lined up. Oh, raise my presser foot just a bit to keep it going. Now we'll see how it goes together do these two, but once you've got the two sewn on, the four sewn on, whatever, go ahead and take it to your mat, your pressing mat, and set the seam first, and then just lift that up and over so that the seam is right behind that um, triangle piece, one that was the, makes the rectangle. Ooh, that's looking good. I think this piece is going to work. Now, go ahead, cut them apart, and let's take a look. Because you can see how that's lined up right here. Got that perfect edge right down here, and then up at the top, it's going straight across. Look at good. So let me stack these up, and then the next piece is gonna go right like this, and wanna flip this piece right sides together, 
And once again, we've got that crumb right down there. When you line that up, use your stiletto to push that in. You've got the crumb piece right here. You've got the tip right here. And then up at the top, you can actually line up those triangles so they're in perfect order. Same quarter inch. Boy, the quarter inch really helps on this. Really, really helps. You know, as I was doing this and thinking about cutting off the crumb, I was thinking about um, Ruby McKim because, you know, actually, Ruby McKim was the editor for Better Homes and Gardens, and she did write about quilts, but she made very few quilts. Very interesting. She actually loved to make aprons. That was her thing. She thought a woman should look just as pretty in the kitchen. She should have all of these fancy aprons that she wore whenever she baked cakes and swept crumbs away. She'd be pretty proud of us if she knew we were using crumbs in our quilting. Okay, the opposite triangle is on now. Once again, just go ahead, set the seam right down on it, lift it up so that the seam is right behind that triangle, the light triangle. All right. Now all we have to do is square this to three and a half inches. Now the best ruler is the six by six ruler. And I just want to stretch over and get that ruler. And whenever you square it, we want to do three and a half inches so the halfway point would be one and three fourths inches. You want to have the halfway one and three fourths inches right on that tip. And also you want to have a quarter inch line, a quarter inch seam provided right up across the top. That's perfect. And that actually just happens. That's a natural. So trim off one side, turn it, you'll just get that little tip up at the top, quarter inch seam right there, and then turn it because there's just two more sides waiting to trim off. Okay, three and a half inches, drop the ruler so that it's now three and a half here along this side three and a half inches along this side. You've got this nice, ample trim that you can go ahead and just square that up. Okay, now you might notice, because this is not a 45 degree angle, that seam is not gonna go right into that corner. You've just got a little bit right down there, and actually, that is perfect. Okay, now there's just one more step that I wanna show you on this, and then we'll have all of the units finished. We're gonna make four of these because this is three and a half inches, our center is also going to be three and a half inches. So just cut a red center, three and a half inches. And this piece I already did earlier. This is for the green leaves and the yellow sun. This is a four by eight inch piece that I drew a four inch squaring line on and I drew diagonal lines right through and sewed on both sides of the diagonal line. This is very similar to jewel box right now. I showed you this technique on jewel box and oh, on a number of different quilts. But this is just really a pieced square that we're gonna go ahead and cut on all of the diagonal lines. And then when we open it up, then all we need to do, oh, I think I better press this. I thought I could get away without it, but I can't. Gotta press it. You're gonna drop all of the pieces on the iron with the, on the mat with the dark on the top, and then just lift that up and over so that the seam is right behind the dark. And then just lay your six by six ruler right on here and square this piece to three and a half inches as well. Up one side and over, then turn it, drop the diagonal line on that seam, and trim it to a perfect three and a half inches. Oh, that is looking good. Okay, that's the basic units. Finishing the cypress block is easy to do. Just take that three and a half inch red center and then take all of those other pieces, all the reds, turn them into the center as well. And then take the green and turn that into the middle too. And then all you need to do is flip the middle row onto the first row and assembly line. So straight down one row, straight down the next and then back across the other way. You'll have your block together in no time. Now, whenever you're pressing, you always wanna press the seams away from that red trumpet. Let me show you. Right on the back side, 
seam away from the red and then under here always away from the red so that whenever they meet in together in the center they interlock and then they're just going to fit together great that final seam goes right into the middle working great now to finish it all you need to do is cut your lattice two inches wide plus the size of the block and then just lay it out surrounding that whole block with lattice Ooh, i love this red looking good for me and then the lattice is in position the two inch cornerstones go right in there as well and then go and add the borders you'd like of any color of any width around the outside edge. Well, now that you know how to do that block, you can make even more beautiful quilts. Now, Sue Bouchard made this one for her grandmother. Her grandmother loves owls, so she made it for her. She fussy cut the owl right in the center, and then you can see the point right here. Actually, this part that was originally red in ours is light here, dark, points on the outside edge. Now to finish this block off, all Sue used was the four patch and this is identical to the one that I made in the jewel box. Again, lattice and a cornerstone surrounding all those blocks and that's all that's in this quilt. Oh, it is wonderful. Her grandmother's going to love it. Now the next one, ooh, is bright, fresh as spring. You can see right here we've got the light here in this part, dark points, and smaller four patch in the corners, and it's block to block. No lattice or cornerstones in between, so that you actually create that chain or that secondary pattern running through. And then right here, this is just a light background square cut exactly the same size as the block, and then finished off with that wonderful machine quilting. Ooh, this one is great too. How about a contemporary one? Now this one is actually made of three different blocks. Right here you've got one block here, and it's a combination of the star point here, but it also has a four patch and a piece square in the corners. This block and then you have a second block here with the repeat and then down in those corners you have Jacob's Ladder blocks. What a great contemporary look. Well I'll tell you what, I like that Cypress block the best but I do have more Kansas City blocks to show you. The Kansas City Star was not able to keep records on the patterns they published. However, the Central Oklahoma Quilt Guild took on the long-term documentation. When the Guild put out the call in 1985, 200 generous people donated their precious quilt clippings. Well, they published the patterns in the ultimate illustrated index to the Kansas City Star Quilt Pattern Collection. Well, from those patterns, what a legacy they have created. The membership made one block of each pattern from the original, and they followed the suggested colors and sizes. They quilted and bound each one of those blocks, and as the blocks were completed, they were mounted on black felt panels for display purposes. Each panel has about 25 blocks. Altogether, 205 Central Oklahoma Quilt Guild members participated, and as they worked with the original patterns, they soon discovered that the originals needed redrafting. Many were not accurate as published. Well, this cypress block looks accurate, and we know that our cypress block fits together beautifully. Well, especially using those two rulers. Well, while I was enjoying the blocks, I noticed a few that you could make using just the rec ruler, just this one. Now, you might want to try the Christmas tree. Ooh, here it is with its snow white background. Well, the star suggests that you make it into a modern pillow with silver gray and black satin. It's pattern number 223 from 1932, and ooh, the quilting is just exquisite. Now this one is fun. It's Crazy Ann, number 793, old from 1949, in green micro dots and floral print. Ooh, it's great. Now the Magnolia Bud, number 184 from 1932, is just perfect for a springtime quilt. And it's pretty in just two different pink fabrics. 
We're grateful to the Kansas City Star for the original quilt patterns and to the Central Oklahoma Quilt Guild for their preservation of the art so we can continue making beautiful quilts.